Well, Jesus walked into a restaurant and said, a table for 26, please. The waiter said, but there's only 13 of you. Jesus said, yes, but we're all going to sit on the same side. Today we have the great teaching about the Eucharist. And the last five weeks during this whole of five weeks of summer, the church has given us John chapter 6, the greatest discourse on the bread of life, the Eucharistic discourse. And today we have the conclusion of the fallout that occurred after the Lord taught about his real presence in the most blessed sacrament. Notice that people had a choice to make. Would they accept what Jesus said or would they reject it? Similar to that first reading where Joshua gives the people a choice. Are you going to follow the one true God of Israel or the pagan gods? And Joshua said, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So Joshua gave the people a choice and they made a choice. Uh, the word Joshua in Hebrew, Yeshua, is the name Jesus. So Jesus is the new Joshua, and he gives his disciples a choice. Would they accept and believe in what Jesus said, that his flesh was true food and his blood was true drink? Unless we eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, we have no life within you. This is a hard saying, as we have here in the Gospel, beginning here in John chapter 6, verse 60. It says, many of Jesus' disciples were listening to him, and they said, this saying is hard, who can accept it? They weren't saying this is difficult to understand. They understood the Lord clearly and correctly, but it was difficult to accept, because how can Jesus give us his body and blood to eat in Holy Communion? Well, of course, later on at the Last Supper, Jesus would reveal how he would give, up, give us himself under the appearances of bread and wine in the Eucharist. But they say, this is a hard saying, who can accept it? And how many disciples did Jesus have at this time? Probably at least 70, maybe as many as 100. After this talk, Jesus would lose all his disciples except for the 12. Imagine you know, a priest giving a homily at a Sunday mass and he says something so strong or so striking or so difficult to accept that everybody walks out except the choir or the servers. Imagine that, and he let them all go. He let maybe 80 of his followers go back to their former way of life. He wasn't going to water down his teaching and say, come back, you misunderstood, I'm not speaking literally, I was only speaking figuratively or metaphorically or allegorically or symbolically. He didn't do that. Jesus taught the truth, they understood what he meant, and they could not accept it, so they walked away. In fact, it says his disciples were murmuring about this. It's the same word John uses here as is used in the Old Testament for the Israelites in the desert who began to murmur against God to remind us that Jesus is the new manna. He's greater than the manna of the Old Testament because the manna in the Old Testament only fed the body but Jesus feeds our soul in the Eucharist. And then the Lord you know, hears them murmuring and says, does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? The Son of Man was the messianic title that Daniel used in the Old Testament, and Jesus always referred to himself as the Son of Man. So he's saying, what if you see me ascend to heaven where I came from? So here Jesus is reminding them of his divinity, that he truly came from heaven, that he is divine, that he is the son of God. And then he gives us the clue on why some people believed and others didn't. And it has to do with the Holy Spirit, that it requires God's grace to accept this teaching. Jesus says here, it is the spirit that gives life while the flesh is of no avail. If we try to understand it just in a, a human, natural, materialistic, fleshly way, we won't understand. We need the Holy Spirit that enlightens our mind to teach us about the reality of this truth that Jesus is speaking. He says, the words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. Spirit does not mean unreal. The Bible says God is spirit. Does that mean God is unreal? No, God is spirit. But Spiritual life is even more real 
than our material world. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. In other words, you need God's grace, the Holy Spirit, to accept and understand this teaching. Then he says, there are some of you who do not believe. And it says here that Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the one who would betray him. And that's referring to Judas. This is the first time in the Bible that we hear that Judas will betray the Lord. And Bishop Sheen says that his belief, his not believing in the Eucharist was the crack in Judas's discipleship. That was the crack in Judas's priesthood is that he could not accept this teaching about Jesus being the bread of life. It's the first time that we hear that Judas will betray the Lord. What's also interesting, do you know what verse this is where it mentions Judas betraying the Lord? John chapter 6, verse 66. So 666. That's how you can remember where this verse occurs in the Bible. Well, you know that the Bible originally did not have chapter and verses. Uh, Stephen Langton, back in the 12th century, began to add chapters. Then in the 15th centuries, other monks would add verses. And I think it's, in a sense, it's a, probably just a divine providence that you have this unique verse of where Judas will betray the Lord in 666, which has always been the number of the evil one of Satan. So then the gospel concludes by saying, for this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by my Father. In other words, you need God's grace, the Holy Spirit, to accept and believe this teaching. Then it says, as a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life. Imagine that losing maybe 80% of all his followers, and he did not call them back. Jesus clearly taught that he is the bread of life. They could not accept it, so he let them go. And then he even turns to the 12 apostles and say, are you going to leave me also? Simon Peter, the first pope, speaks up and says, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Jesus has the words of eternal life. And remember that the reason why we believe that the bread and wine become the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus at the Mass is because of our hearing. We don't see any change. We don't taste any change. We don't smell any change in the elements of the bread and wine. It's only our hearing where we know that it becomes the body and blood of Christ. St. Thomas Aquinas mentions that in that beautiful hymn that taste and touch and smell all deceive us. It's only our hearing where we know that it becomes the body and blood of Christ because we hear the priest say over the bread, this is my body, this is the cup of my blood. Even though we don't see a change, we know because we hear those words of Christ spoken by the priest where the bread and wine become the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ. So each one of us has a choice like the people in the Old Testament like Jesus' followers, do we pray for that grace of the Holy Spirit to accept Jesus' teaching that he is the true bread of heaven, that he is the bread that came down from heaven, that he is the Son of God made present in the most blessed sacrament. So each one of us has a choice to make. Do we accept the teachings of Christ or do we walk away? Let us pray that we will always be faithful to Christ and be his true disciples because we know that he alone has the words of eternal life.